What's going on everybody? Today is a super easy day. Four of us are going just from Cape May to Sandy Hook and that's it. We're doing some makeups. It's a Monday. I'm going to give the GoPro to Reed again because you guys absolutely loved him and he absolutely loves doing this. I'm going to give the GoPros to some of the other guys soon but today is going to be solely about Reed. He's going to go over his plane. He's going to go over what we do from his perspective. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to give the GoPros to him. I'm actually waiting for my manager, Brett, to pick me up at my house. I don't have my car. It's actually at the mechanic shop right now. So hopefully I get there in time to see Reed, give him my GoPros, and we're just going to go. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Leave a like, comment, and yeah, you're not going to be really seeing me along this video. You're going to be seeing Reed. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, good morning, everybody. You guys get to tag along with me today. Show you my schedule here real quick, and then we'll go do a little quick walk around the airplane. So this is what I'm gonna be doing today. I got a small, short run, Cape May to Avalon, picking and landing back here at Woodbine. Get a small little break, get the fuel and piss. Then the next one is a four hour long run, and that is Cape May to Sandy Hook, drop at Lakewood. I'll probably have to pack the dang thing up myself. So that'll be fun, you'll get to see all that. Um, pretty much ready to go. I got my lunch and all that stuff going. I just need a shirt, and uh, then we'll go out to the airplane. Now that we're out here at the plane, uh, something I like to do, I like to keep a uh, written copy of what my schedule is for the day my times that i take off and stuff like that so if the company phone fails then i still get paid so i'll stick that up here show you a couple things got some extra batteries for when i'm bumping out to my bump and grind music on pandora uh phone is in here it is going to be ready to rock and roll right in. look at that sexy woman right there i don't know if you can see her or not but that's the missus. That's why I do this. All right, so you guys kind of got to run down to my plane uh, a little bit last week. Um, set up pretty much. They're all set up somewhat similar. Um, you guys have seen mine before. Uh, give you a little trip downstairs. Uh, I kind of cheat a little bit. So when I'm flying and I have a banner in tow, I take my handy dandy little bungee cord here and I stick it right there on that right rudder i don't know if you can see that or not but it prevents me from having to put so much right rudder on and i actually get to relax a little bit so i make sure i take it off every time i land uh, i got my bag i got reels i got oil i have extra hook uh oh hang on the boss wants to talk all right so i'm back we just got our beep chewed because two people left their airplanes out last night so that's bad juju especially the cubs because they're super light i mean look at this you can see all the way down to the very end of this airplane um there's really no weight to them whatsoever except for on the front which is the engine um but anyway so yeah uh get our butt chewed i've kind of already done uh went through and did a pre-flight on my plane nice shiny prop uh we go and put oil on them just to keep the uh the salt water from eroding on them so bad um i mean you can kind of see the cylinders and everything that salt water does some uh does some major damage to the uh the casing the bolts the engines but uh i'm pretty much ready to go so we get paid to do our a uh our waxes on our airplanes and uh some of the guys don't like doing it uh so we will me and colton have been uh taking the planes this year and you get a hundred dollars per wax so we split it you know 50 50. um just a way to make some money you know on your days off and whatnot i'm not from here i'll get into this a little bit later um but uh yeah i came up here to work family's gone they're all in mississippi right now um so I'm up here playing bachelor, but not really because I don't go anywhere. Um, but yeah, anyway, well, I'll get into that here in a little bit. Give you a little background on me, where I plan on going, what I plan on doing. And uh, that's about it. 
we can go ahead and jump in on the uh, what I plan on doing after banner towing. Um, the whole purpose of me coming up here was uh, to get some tail wheel time. Uh, I've been flying for probably about five or six years, but uh, it's kind of hard. I run a welding business in Texas, a pretty good one. I uh, have for probably about 10 years. Uh, and a, about two years ago, I finished up my commercial. The whole goal was when my wife was in the military that I was going to uh, come fly and we were going to kind of switch spots because I worked pretty much full time while she was going to school. And uh, so she finished her doctorate. She's all good now. She's been doing her job delivering babies for oh, two and a half years. We're almost done with our military commitment in Mississippi. Then we go back home to Texas. I can't freaking wait. Uh, after that, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. Uh, I would like to go ag. Uh, I think I need a little bit more tailwheel time. I'm probably only going to get maybe 300 hours this year. Uh, I can add an extra 100 or so to it. I own a 1946 little T-Craft. Uh, it's down in Mississippi right now. Uh, I'll probably fly that quite a bit before I sell it. Um, it's just not useful for me with two seats and a 65 horse engine. You can't do a whole lot in it. But... Uh, yeah, so other than that, that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. Uh, get into ag, do that for a couple, two, three years. And then possibly get into the fires, which is uh, what my father-in-law does. Um, that would be a cool gig. You know, you're you're kind of saving the day. You get to be the hero. Hero or a zero, I guess, if you miss your drop. But, you know, you save people's houses from burning due to wildfires and whatnot. So it's a goal. I'm a little on the older side, so we'll see how that works out. Um, but that's kind of the, uh, the option. And then again, I'm a pretty damn good welder. So I always have that to fall back on and I can stay home. He's getting the open yeah, this is where he needs to be. Where is he? Oh, facing the wind. Yeah. He's not climbing for shit. Barely. So Connery, when he took off, he had his banner was upside down and we thought it was backwards. So we told him to make a left turn and the left turns in the airplanes, especially in the Cessnas, it gives them a little bit more of a leveling the airplane out so it will climb a little bit better. And uh, when he was coming around, he said he was having trouble climbing. So he was trying to get into the wind, get a little bit of updraft, raise him up a little bit. You know, just we try to use every advantage we can when we're towing something that's putting an excessive amount of drag on the airplane. No ground loops. No. Now batting number nine, Joe the Machine Lloyd in the Piper Tom August 9th first day. Captain Hutch, the king of swing and his freaking 18 second freaking banner pick. <laughs> Sorry, that should have been beeped out. Anyways. He makes a nice tight pattern, no d off. Time to get the job done. Oh, and it's a dollar. stabilized now kind of got everything situated uh, right here this is paramount field they uh usually they tow a little bit smaller banners than we do see a couple guys down there on the ground doing some groundwork uh, i've been having an issue with my throttle liking to leak out on me for some reason it likes to move so what i have to do is kind of shimmy a, a deal in here to keep it from doing that see if i can't get you a better view just some of the stuff that we have to deal with when we're up here, you know, just, it's nothing major. I just, uh, I have to get it to where it can stay in one spot, so, 
Um, I will talk with the mechanics, see if I can't get them to tighten it up just a little bit. It's nice on these days because you can, uh, we call it the double stick day. I won't get into details as why, but the one I am currently holding is a lot bigger than the other one. We got CJ from Paramount right there on the dirty 30 with us. CJ, can we, we swing wag? Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Always a pleasure to have Reed on the 30 30. Always. And you got beach traffic heading southbound on midway between Avalon and Stern Harbor heading south. Woodbine right there uh, in front of me a little bit. I'm up at about 800 now. It just gives us a little bit of clearance, uh, you know, for the little cell tower, stuff like that, that, you know, get put up every stinking year. So, like pilot's number one nightmare. Oh, uh, that was rough. <laughs> Yeah, I had a bad one too. <laughs> Alright, so we'll fill up, take this, and then uh, put a hook on, and we'll be ready to go for the next, uh, next level of run. You got it. Here it comes. stuck the southbound reed banner. We have two barefoots. One goes from Cape May up to Sandy Hook and lands at Lakewood, and then we have one that comes out of either Lakewood or Eagle's Nest and comes all the way to, San, uh, to Cape May, and we drop it at Woodbine. So they stuck the wrong one on. Uh, I was going to come back in and drop it, and uh, big business. Brett told me, uh, said, just go up to AC, go to Cape May, make it two hours. So I got a call here about, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe five or ten minutes ago from old Headshed. And uh, supposedly my refueler did not put his frickin' cap on all the way. So there is a fuel cap sitting at Woodbine Airport. I don't understand how dumbasses can do that, but it happens. Lunch menu. Grapes. A lot of a lot of water and grapes. That's good. You need that when you're up here. Ham and pepper jack sandwich. No fixings whatsoever. No condiments whatsoever. Because you never know when you're going to eat it. You don't want mayonnaise going bad or mustard going bad or anything on your sandwich. That would make for a horrible freaking flight. So I got a bag full of snacks in the back. Handy dandy caffeina drink for you non-Spanish speaking people. Caffeina means caffeine. I really don't know if that's how you say it, but I think it is. Um, yeah, we're coming back up on the AC here. And, uh, wow, well, there's an AWAC. Don't get to see them too often. Check this out. Usually two of them, but uh, I guess he's all lonesome today. So here we go, we got Steel Pier and their uh, helicopter rides. Pretty fun day there. Put the wife and son on that. That was pretty neat the other day. Steel Pier is pretty cool. Atlantic City, Atlantic City Beach. Not very nice. I don't like it. Smells funny. A lot of weird people. A couple of druggies down there passed out on the bench. I don't know why people do that with their lives. You want to see some interesting stuff, go walk the Atlantic City Boardwalk. You'll get to see some stuff, all right? Hell, just come to Atlantic City, period, and you'll get to see some stuff really weird.
weird. Well, I mean, it's kind of a life of banner pilot right here. Eat your lunch in the cockpit, fly up and down the beach all damn day, or get a freaking gas cap. It is what it is. Hey, so I wanted to uh, touch base on this fuel issue. Um, you know, with stuff like that, obviously, like I said, if it's a rough day, then I probably would have went back and I would have got the gas cap. But being this nice and smooth and it's hands off, really don't have too much to worry about it. I mean, if you think about it, this airplane holds 61 gallons of fuel, okay? Now, if I was going up north, I probably would have stopped, got the fuel cap, because that's a four and a half hour tow. It's a long day. You definitely don't want to be uh, playing around with your fuel management on something like that. So right now in the right tank, I'm showing uh, three quarters of the tank, okay? And that is the one that the gas cap is missing. I'm held onto my phone real tight, you know, bulk and death grip, like a ninja, and stuck my phone out there and took a, took a video of it. I didn't see any fuel coming out of it, so we should be okay. Uh, they only found one cap, so I'm assuming the left one is on. Assumptions, you know what that turns out to be. But, uh... So in the left tank, I got three quarters as well. Like I said, my fuel is weird in this. Even though it's on right tank, it'll drain some out of the left tank. Uh, looks like I have a, oh, okay. Sorry, parasailers moving. Uh, but so with, uh, you know, even on one tank, you know, and this is a two hour tow, say maybe a two and a half hour tow if I want to push it a little bit longer, which I probably will. Uh, 12 gallons an hour. That's what our base rate is for fuel no matter what. Um, I've had it down. I got the mixture actually pulled a little bit, so I'll probably do a little bit better than that. I might be down, you know, 9, 10, somewhere in there. So I'm giving myself a little bit of leeway. So as a pilot, you're constantly doing that uh, no matter what the situation it is, whether it's weather, a fuel, uh, distance, time, any of that stuff, you're always bringing into certain factors of just your prior training. So, uh, like I said, I'm still on the right tank, and I got three quarters of the tank, so, I mean, could I get two hours of fuel out of the right tank? Probably. I still have the left tank to work with. Uh, there's multiple airports here that I can land at if we do have a situation or a problem. Um, and if it does get too, too close and it looks like it's going to be really bad, I'll just head straight back to Woodbine. And I'll put my gas cap on and then I'll come back out and I'll finish the route where I was. That's kind of my fault. So you can't do nothing about it. You just take the, uh, take the bad with the good and the good with the bad and run with it. Just I'm still sitting here flying the airplane no matter what. I'm watching my old temp, watching my altimeter, airspeed, oil pressure, all that stuff. Uh, you know, obviously at this point, if the engine starts running really, really super rough, I'm probably going to switch fuel tanks, number one right off the get-go, just simply because I know I have a problem with the fuel. So, uh, other than that, that just gives you a little bit of uh, some pilot knowledge and uh, pilot decision-making, I guess, in the midst. Uh, can't, like I said, I can't do nothing about it now. I'm in the air. I can always go back and land if it becomes a big problem. So I'm going to watch it very closely like a hawk. Uh, you'll probably see me doing this in the videos a bunch of times, and that's because I'm not noodle necking, looking at some nice rack on the beach. I'm noodle necking, trying to watch my fuel and make sure I'm not going to put myself into a predicament where I end up going for a swim today. So uh, other than that, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll jump back in on some more safety stuff here in a little bit. I'm going to finish eating my grapes, drink some caffeine because I'm going to need it, especially if I do go in the water. I'm going to need some energy to swim out of this joker. So, uh, anyway, I'll be back on it. So I just heard from the big boss dog, uh, and he said he's probably going to have me uh, come in at Sea Isle, depending on what my fuel burn is, uh, just to be safe. Obviously, safety is number one. Safety is key. And obviously, I don't want to stick his airplane in the water. I sure as hell don't want to go in the water. This water looks cold, nasty, full of sharks. I'm good. I don't mind catching them. I don't want to get bit by one. Okay? I will uh, keep you all informed and let you all know when something else pops up. Until then, onward ho.
Shocker. You can see that there is a haze over everything, and uh, I can feel it in the air. It's a little cool. Um, it looks as if it's just, uh, I mean, not really anything crazy, but you can definitely tell some stuff building. We got that big thunderstorm over there that's kind of building up right now. Um, other than that, I mean, this is a pretty standard flight. This is Ocean City, by the way. Uh, we just passed the airport heading southbound. This one, probably one of the nicest uh, beaches, and Ocean City is also alcohol-free, supposedly. Um, so it makes it really a good family-oriented beach. They love coming here. All right, so I just got word from uh, the big boss dog, Double D. He wants me to go ahead and cut it back in after Sea Isle, uh, just to be safe, which, I mean, I don't blame him, to be honest with y'all. Uh, no harm, no foul. I just didn't get to do the full route. I'm the one losing hours today. We'll have to make it up again at some point. Uh, so, it is what it is. I mean, I'm still good on fuel, but, you know, like I said, safety is key with this job. If you are not a competent pilot, you are not going to last in banner towing. This is, uh, a lot of stuff can happen really fast when you're really close to the ground. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the boss's precautions. We're going to head in uh, here shortly. I'll stay on a little bit longer with y'all and, uh, you know, Sea Isle's right up here, not too far, and then I'm five miles from the airport, so uh, got plenty of space to land, plenty of fuel to make it. We'll just go from there. So, uh, screwed up my day, I vlog. Way to go, dumbass. I'm going to drop the banner. They're going to reset it. I'm going to stop, get my fuel cap, fill up if I need to, I probably will just to be safe. Fuel is the number one thing that'll bring an airplane to the ground really freaking fast. So uh, go ahead and I'll fill back up and then I'll take back off, pick the banner again, come back out, finish my route in Sea Isle, Cape May, and then back to the airport. So uh, not losing anything, gaining a lot, I guess, if you look at it from a safety standpoint. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Go talk to the boss. All right, so that wasn't too bad, but I'm still going on the board. Ryan, put me on the board for being a dumbass. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so. Stupid. Whether it vibrated off, fell off, I didn't put it on, who knows. Still a dumbass. <laughs> Don't forget yours, Joe. See, live and learn, teach as you go. All right, so if I don't know if you can see that or not, it doesn't look like there's much down here on the flaps and whatnot, but you can definitely tell that it sucked some out. Obviously it wasn't a whole lot. Uh, I'm still sitting at a half a tank on the left-hand side and three quarters on the right, so. Um, I guess what they were concerned with is that if it had created a vacuum, it would also, you know, not only drain the right tank, but then it would suck the left tank as well uh, and could suck it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and fill back up. Looks like Joe has all his in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to see how many gallons I actually burnt in a matter of an hour and 30 minutes or so of a flight. So uh, I'll jump back on here in a minute. Uh, fuel was 22 gallons so and i flew for about an hour and a half so yeah i was burning a lot more than i normally would uh so that was 14.6 gallons an hour so um i hold 61 gallons like i said this route's only two two and a half uh uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess you probably could be pushing the envelope, but hey, better safe than sorry, and uh, I'll be back on in the air here shortly.
comes. Those holes are pretty close together. Seen how Joe picked yesterday. Stop, you're complaining. <laughs> Gonna finish up my route and then uh, come back. Yeah, I'll probably lose you here in a second there, Sheldon. Yeah, I'm almost up to up here. Uh, my born again, uh, so yeah, I'm probably lose you. Yeah, well, if I don't talk to you, man, I'll catch you uh, either tomorrow or later on this week. Yeah, probably tomorrow I'll be on. Uh, and then uh, the next day, I think our other guy's going to be on with me, so we'll see. Oh, cool. Awesome. Break him in on the dirty 30. Oh, yeah, the dirty 30. <laughs> All right, buddy. Later. Later. So right now I'm going to jump in behind Carlos here. Uh, he's uh, dropping into Sea Isle and so am I. So I'm going to uh, try to watch him here and see where he's at. He's a little bit lower than me. I'm up at about 1,000 and he is down at probably about 800. So I'm uh, trying to drop in behind him so that way I don't screw up his route. As it looks, Carlos has a left read banner, so he is probably going to be into Sea Isle, so he will not be a factor. I am right read, which means I am going to drop in right here where I came out, and then uh, we will pass him on the beach. Always trying to keep an eye out out here, you just you never know. I mean, like I said, you know, uh, some of the Paramount guys, they don't have any radios. Uh, there's like maybe one or two of them that do. Maybe one of them that uses it. Um, so, you know, in our previous vlog, I talked about, you know, just watching certain things when you're out here flying. And uh, a lot of it, man, it just boils down to safety. I mean, safety, safety, safety. It's, you know, like I was talking about with those cell towers earlier today. Man, they're putting those things up freaking everywhere, you know. And as a new pilot, they're only updating the maps so often. Um, you know, you've got to always be on the watch out for stuff like that. Uh, just because, and then, you know, like I said earlier too, they, uh, anytime you're out flying, I mean, yeah, there's that big sky theory, but man, I don't know, you get one little private pilot brand new showing off for his girlfriend gets out there and he's flying at 500, 500 feet and pops up in front of you, that's going to be a bad day, so. Beach traffic, Yellow Cubs going to be dropping into, uh, Seaside, be heading southbound, uh, 500 Shaka. Peace driver Yellow Pony with the veterans of being born in your light off northbound uh, 700 feet. Uh, Peace traffic. So throughout the day, we're always giving periodic reports of where we're at, what we're doing, uh, which direction we're going. Uh, you know, again, safety. It's all fucking safety. Everything is safety. Uh, a lot of us have family, we've got kids. I got three kids. Uh, want to, at the end of the season, go home to them. So, um, yeah, we're always trying to be as safe as possible. And, you know, every now and then we'll goof around. Coming straight at you, Carlos. All right. Except I'm not playing chicken, though. They want it inside? No, I'm taking outside. My banner's leaning a little uh, weird. All right. Always pour that far, so... I got him. He's out there a ways. Carlos. Yo. Looking good. You too, buddy. Like I said, I'll meet you back at the airport with a cold beer. Yeah, baby. So one thing up here that you absolutely have to have, an absolute frickin' must, is Pandora, Spotify, something, anything that you can, you know, uh, audiobooks, anything. I don't get very good service up here because I got Verizon, but, um, yeah, anything you can do to, you know, keep your mind going, you know, other than sitting here listening to the roar of the engine. Get a good headset too, by the way, A&R, noise canceling. A 
unless you're Ryan, and then you want to, I'll let him do his David and Clark pitch, but uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of those at all, they hurt my head, but anyway, uh, back to the music, band, whatever it is, whatever you can rock out to, I mean, oh, what a better view, you're 300 foot off of the beach, 300 foot high, rocking out to your favorite song in an airplane flying, dude, it's a... Uh, the day doesn't get any better than that. It's, it's really awesome. So I'm going to get back to jamming. Give you guys a little bit more background on me. Uh, when I was stationed out in California, uh, I used to DJ. I used to spin vinyl records. So like when I'm up here in the airplane, sometimes these people probably look at, at me and they're like, what the hell is this guy doing? But I'll get on here and I'll uh, I'll jam out to uh, some old school deep house music. Kind of a weird mixture for uh, uh, I don't know. It's, you know. To me, it's a weird mixture. It should be listening to something like freaking ACDC and you know some crazy Slipknot. Another way you can always check your banner to see how it's flying. If it's flying like a carpet, that thick black square back there will not be so thick. It'll be really, really thin and really hard to see. So I know my banner's flying good. Um, you can kind of get a good idea of which direction I am flying. It looks like I'm flying out towards the ocean. That's because I am uh, crabbing pretty good. I uh, got a wind coming in from the south, uh, southeast, I guess. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just, uh, you just fly. You just let it do whatever, let the banner do whatever, and go from there. Something else I don't know if anybody uh, has mentioned yet or not um, is sunblock. Uh, you will want to put sunblock on the tops of your knees because you will burn. you got to think that's in the sun all day, the tops of your hands. That's the reason some of us wear long sleeve shirts and a hat, you know, try to keep as much of the sun off of us as possible. But, uh, yeah, sunblock. Sunblock is key. Even though that is tinted, doesn't mean it's UV proof. Same thing with this giant frickin' magnifying All that is is a magnifying glass. That's it. Sun's just at us all day. All day. If you watch real close, you get to see a ton of dolphins down here. See them out there? Little pod. I don't know. He might have to zoom in on this video, but... We get a lot of dolphins down here. A lot of dolphins. you guys can see that in the video or not, but we are going this way, and my airplane is facing this way. That is a pretty good crab. With 
Bond traffic, yellow cub, base to final, full stop, landed one nine, woodbine. So what us cub guys like to do, we like to uh, come in and land and exit off of Bravo right there. If you can see the runway, it's uh, maybe a couple hundred feet, so I'll show you. See, we are exiting Bravo. Yellow Cup's clear of the active. <laughs> oh, gotta love it. Gotta love these big, tired Cubs. Alright, folks. Well, appreciate you uh, joining me for today. We will... Uh, I guess catch you on the next go-around. I don't know who the next pilot's gonna be, but... Hope you guys enjoyed. I think I filled up an entire SD card with all my shenanigans today. So, anyway, alright. Shocker is out for good, boys. We'll catch you later.